Hey friends, it is Kate here. Thank you so much for jumping on my channel and joining me for a class today. I have got a 30 minute Pilates yoga fusion class just for you. Now I wouldn't necessarily call this one a beginner, probably a little bit more intermediate. Um, and that is not to say that beginners cannot jump in with me. In fact, I do give plenty of modifications throughout, but just be mindful, know where you are at today. And if you need to step it up a little or take it down a notch, that is always fabulous. Roll out your mat and let's get started. We'll begin in an easy seat on the floor or on your mat. And you can either sit like I am in a little hero's pose and kneeling position, or you could sit with your legs crossed in front of you if that feels better for you. Either way, allow your hands to relax either on the tops of your thighs or down by your sides if that works. Roll your shoulders back, pull your belly button in, draw the ribs together while at the same time you open across the front of your chest. Lightly close your eyes if you're in the mood. You can always keep them open though if you feel more comfortable with that. And take a long, slow sip of air in. And a big, easy breath out. Again, a great big full inhale and a nice warm breath out. One more time. Let it go. Seal your lips together and begin breathing through your nose. Could you ever so lightly drop your chin just so we can lengthen through the very top of our spine? Almost imagine a little string attached to your head, lightly pulling you up. Shoulders broadening side to side. Go ahead and flutter your eyes open if they aren't already. Inhale, sweep your hands up nice and high. Exhale, flip the palms, press them down. Inhale, it's like you're moving through water and take them up. Exhale down. Now this next time as you inhale, allow your gaze to go with you and think of a little string attached to your sternum, pulling and puffing your chest up with you. Exhale all the way down, tuck your chin to your chest as the hands return. One more time, inhale, swim the hands up, gaze, chest, heart comes all the way up. And now exhale, bring your hands all the way down to the ground and we'll come into our first downward dog of class. When you arrive in your downward facing dog, let yourself settle. Notice if you want your feet a little closer together, a little wider. Traditionally speaking, they'll be in line with the hips, but if you open them a bit wider, that's okay too. Think of fanning your fingertips wide and almost pressing your hands through the mat. It's like they're glued to the mat and you are reaching your tushy, your little hip bones further and further away. Take a great big filling breath in and find that big, warm, easy sigh out. Maybe pedal out the feet a little, maybe rock and sway the hips side to side. Remember, downward dog is not about straightening the legs completely. There can always be a nice big bend. In fact, even though I can straighten my legs, I do often bend the knees because you just get a different feel. I get a little more length through my spine, which is what downward facing dog is all about. Whether you've bent your knees or not, I do want you to. It's almost like you're sinking back, like you're about to pounce. And instead of pouncing, we are going to propel forward and find our plank pose. And then exhale, return to that downward dog with your knees bent. <sighs> Inhale, propel yourself, yourself forward, find your plank pose. Exhale, return to your dog with bent knees. One more time, plank pose. Come on back to that downward dog and stay. Really bend those knees once more. And now instead of just propelling forward to our plank, we're just going to propel our right leg forward to a great big lunge. And if you need a little helping hand to get your leg up there, that's a okay. 
bring your hands right between your foot. I'm sorry, bring your foot right between your hands. Now, whether or not you need to tent your fingertips is up to you and your body. I've got tiny little dino arms, proportionally speaking. Um, so I do need to tent. If I place them all the way down, I really have to hunch over my leg to get there. So you could either tent or if you have some blocks, that's always a lovely option as well. Either way, let's arrive in this nice, great, big, low crescent lunge and I just want us to shift our weight back and forth a little bit. Finding a little movement in our body can be really nice, very gentle. And then knowing there's no hurry whatsoever, I want you to set your back knee down on the ground. Now personally, I like to untuck my toe and press the top of my foot into the mat. That helps remove some of that pressure, but you can always do whatever you need to. Plant your whole left hand down to the floor, even if you've got tiny dino arms like me, and place your right hand on top of your right thigh. I want you to press so deeply into that right thigh that you're able to look across and up to the sky. It's like you're looking past your shoulder. Now this is a spot where a lot of us will kind of cave in and instead you're going to use that um, leverage from pressing into your knee to help open up and broaden those shoulders and broaden your chest once more. Take a big deep inhale here. Great big sigh out. Unravel, set both hands on the floor, and as we exhale, we'll just tip our hips back into a small half monkey pose. Now, there are a couple of options here. Sometimes it feels nice to flex the foot. Sometimes it feels good to keep the whole foot down. Traditionally speaking, in our half monkey, your hips are right over your back knee, but you know what, if you sink a little further down, that is certainly not the end of the world. And oftentimes I get a deeper stretch through my leg when I sink back. It's kind of up to you and what your body is just calling for today. I do like to give my hips a little swivel here, that can feel really nice. I like to think about opening that shoulder, I'm sorry, opening my chest a little side to side as I do so, and then reaching my sitting bones back towards my left heel. Take a big inhale. And return to that great big crescent lunge. Now this time, instead of just bringing our right hand onto our thigh, we're going to bring both hands. Press into your thigh to lift your shoulders over your chest. Pull your belly button up and in. Lift your head up nice and high. Find that lovely crescent lunge. Take a big deep inhale here. Big sigh out. One more big breath. Place your hands onto the mat, tuck your back toe, and return to that bent knee downward dog. Just like we did earlier, spring forward, propel into your plank pose. Exhale, dog. Inhale, way forward, plank pose. Exhale, dog. Last one, find your plank pose. Exhale, dog. Hold right here for a moment. Take um, a breath or two, guiding your hips further away, drawing your ribs in, and then when you're ready, propel just your left foot into our crescent lunge. Again, you can tent the fingertips. You could drop the knee immediately if you prefer. There is no perfect pose. Do think about me pulling your ears away from your shoulders. I am guiding your head, your chest up and away, and you are trying to press your back right heel closer towards the floor. Plant down into your right palm. Take your left hand to your left thigh and roll that shoulder and look over and across up to the sky, just like we did earlier. Can you think of kissing your shoulder blades together behind your body? This twist is happening from your belly button and up your spine. Your hips should not have twisted. They should have stayed in the same spot they were when both hands were on the mat. Take one more breath and drop your hand down. Now we will set our back knee down, untuck, and find the beginning of a little low lunge. If you wanna swivel right here, go ahead, maybe sway side to side, or we can take that back and forth movement again, whatever works better for your body. And then tip the hips back as you exhale and find your half monkey to this side. And just notice what feels different. Now half monkey obviously does get into the back of the leg a little bit, and our hamstrings can be very um, inconsistent from one side to the other. So if you find that one side was just so much 
quote unquote easier, um, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, a lot of things we do in our daily life um, can add to those imbalances. And there's nothing wrong with having one side that just has a little bit more um, range of motion. Um, it's a good thing for you to know. Then you can either work on, you know, correcting those imbalances or you can just give yourself a little um, extra love or tenderness when you get to one of those sides that's maybe a little more tight, a little more precarious in our own body. There is no hurry. There is no rush. This is one of my favorite spots, so I can always stay here for a long time. But when you're ready, crawl yourself back forward. Now remember, we're not just gonna bring the left hand on top of the thigh, but both. Roll the shoulder, lift the heart and chest, pull your belly button up and in. Do pay attention to that front knee. We don't wanna let it fall either towards the left or kind of cave into the right. It should be pointing in the same direction of your toes. Think of using that leverage from pressing into your thigh to help pull the belly button in, to lift the chest, to send your head up high. Put a smile on your face. You know this feels good. Take a breath. Set the hands down, tuck your back toe, ooh, and then return to your downward facing dog. Send those hips up nice and high. We're in that great big bent knee downward dog. Inhale, roll forward, find your plank. Exhale, return to your dog. Inhale, roll forward, find your plank. Exhale, return to your dog. One more time forward, find your plank. We're going to hold here. Now, it's always better to take your hands a little bit wider than to ever experience a too narrow of kind of a, a grip on the floor during our plank pose. So you can always open your fingertips a little bit wider um, if that works better in your body. Pull your belly button up and in and broaden your shoulders. Think of cinching your waist here. Now, almost imagine there are two magnets attached to your inner thighs, gently drawing those inner thighs towards one another. Tone your belly a little bit more. We're gonna hold here for three more breaths. You know you love it. If you're experiencing any tension in your low back, maybe lift your hips up just a little bit more. You might be sinking your pelvis to the ground, which is not ideal. Give me one more big inhale. And then exhale, set the knees down. Sink back into a child's pose. Maybe a wide leg child's pose, or you could bring your knees together if that feels better. No hurry, no rush. Roll yourself up to your hands and your knees. Return to that downward facing dog in kind of that pounce-like position. Reach those sitting bones up, tone the belly. Think of cinching the waist here. Are your shoulders climbing up to your ears? Could you broaden and soften? Take a big inhale. And then let's hop our right foot forward again. We're back in that great big lunge. Now, I want you again to imagine those magnets between your inner thighs. But oh my goodness, they are obviously very far apart. So they are pulling towards one another. That creates a little bit of lift between my inner thighs. Once I have that stability, I want you to think of pressing down into your foot pulling your belly button away from your thigh and hover your fingertips off of the mat. This is a big one. Can we hold here for a moment? Can we open up those shoulders? Take a great big inhale, big breath out. Now imagine you're holding two heavy weights. Your hands are being pulled down to the ground. Your arms should be active. Take an inhale and swoop them back so they're in line with your hips. Tone that belly a little bit more. Press your back your heel closer to the mat. Take a big deep inhale. Great big breath out. And then three times, I just want you to open your arms out to the side like a little T. Exhale, bring them right back down. Inhale, open them out to a little T. Exhale, bring them right back down. Last one, little T. Exhale, right back down. Plant the hands on the mat. Set your back knee onto the ground. Untuck the toes and let's find that nice big lunge. Now, once more, hand can be on the thigh or you could reach it up to the sky. Whatever variation of your twist works better for your body is perfectly fine. Take a full deep inhale here. Set the hand down, reach your hips back, find that half monkey pose again. And no, 
notice? Do you need to crawl your toes a little further forward to find a bigger variation? What works best in your body? The more you pull your belly button away from the top of your thigh and kind of reach the top of your head forward and think about chest down, not head, the deeper of a stretch you may experience through the back of your leg. Another big inhale here. And then crawl that foot forward, tuck your back toe, and return to your downward facing dog. Bend those knees, lift your hips up higher, and then three times let's way forward, find our plank. Exhale, dog. <sighs> Inhale forward, find your plank. Exhale, dog. <sighs> One more time forward, find your plank. Exhale, dog. <sighs> Give yourself a breath or two, and then as you feel ready, hop your left foot forward. Let's imagine those magnets between our inner thighs once more. Let's pull our belly button up and in. And then when you feel ready, hover the fingertips up and away. You still have those weights, or you could even imagine you're holding onto great big heavy buckets. I don't know, of paint or something, who knows? Something nice and heavy that is pulling them down. So we have to turn on all of our arm muscles. Take a big breath and when you're ready, swing those arms back. Now it's like you're trying to punch your arms towards the wall behind you while you're reaching your back heel down and finding a lovely stretch through the back of your right leg. Three times, inhale, open your hands out to that T. Exhale, tone the belly, pull them back down. <sighs> inhale, open them out. Exhale, tone and close. <sighs> Last one, open. Exhale, close, take a breath. Set the arms down, set the hands down, and sink your back knee to the ground. Toes tucked or untucked. And then when you're ready, we'll take our twist. Hand can, of course, be on your thigh, or it could be up to the sky. You do you. Keep opening up shoulders wherever your left hand happens to be. Take a big inhale and drop it down. Let's sink our hips back and find that half monkey on our second side. And give yourself time to move, to groove, maybe even to soften that chest a little further down or keep yourself up if that's what you need. All bodies are different, my friends. You might even feel different day to day. If you're coming back for this class again, notice what's changed since the first time you tried it. Roll forward once more, tuck your back toe, and return to our great big plank pose. I'm sorry, downward facing dog. I make mistakes too, my friends. Sway those hips a little side to side. Take a big deep inhale, press through your feet, propel forward, find your plank and hold. Now, like I said before, hands can be nice and wide in our plank pose if we need them to be. Keep thinking about those little magnets attached to your inner thighs and pull your belly button up and in. All I want you to do is rock lightly over to the left foot so you can lift the right foot up. If that is too much, we could set our left knee down and do the same thing here. Um, you do whatever works best for you, but we should have our right leg up. And now I want you to think of those magnets and you are going to kiss the magnets together. <sighs> Inhale, release. Exhale, kiss the magnets together. <sighs> Inhale, release. Three more times. Kiss the magnets together. <sighs> Inhale, release. Two more. <sighs> Let it go. Last one. <sighs> Open it up, set that foot down. Rock the weight towards the right side of your body, picking up your left. Same thing, squeeze your inner thighs towards one another. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. Let it go. Three more, exhale as you pull them together. Inhale, open. Two more, exhale, pull them in. Inhale, open. Last one, pull it in. Inhale, open, take a breath. Set that foot down, big inhale. Exhale, return to your great big downward dog. Take a moment here, swivel those hips around. Take a big inhale. When you feel ready, exhale, step the right foot forward once more. Press it down into your feet. Think of those magnets pulling in, hover your fingertips up. You've got your heavy weights, you've got your buckets of 
paint or water, whatever you're holding on to, and then swoop them back again. Now this time, instead of taking our arms wide, we will kiss them towards one another, similar to what we did in our low body just a moment ago. So big inhale here. Exhale, try and reach your fist towards one another. <sighs> inhale, release. Exhale, reach your fist towards one another. <sighs> go ahead, inhale, open. Exhale, pull them in. <sighs> Let it go. Let's do two more. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> Hold it there. Set the hands down. Set the knee down. Press down into the ground with your left palm. Take your twist. Hand up to the sky. Now, just depending on where we are in our body, if this isn't enough, you could take a little half bind. I'm reaching my right fingertips towards my left hip, and then I roll my shoulder over and look up. That little bind is just to assist in opening that shoulder. And it, you can do that in any which way that we've been there before. Unravel when you're ready, set the hands down, and reach your hips back. Crawl those toes forward, flex your foot. If you haven't tried that already, I find I get a deeper stretch when I do it that way. One more big inhale. Send your weight forward, hop your foot back, return to your downward facing dog. Now no hurry, no rush as you feel ready. Let's hop our left foot forward. You know where you're going, my friends. Inner thighs pulling towards one another. Shoulders opening up side to side. Hover your hands up and away. Hold on to your imaginary weights. Turn on your arms and then send them back. Belly button is pulling away from the top of your thigh. Ribs are knitting towards one another while you broaden across the front of your chest. Big inhale. Exhale, try and touch your fists towards one another. <sighs> inhale, release. Exhale, touch. <sighs> inhale, open. Exhale, close. <sighs> Three more open. Exhale, close. <sighs> Two more. Exhale, close. <sighs> Last one, exhale, close, let it go. Set the hands down, relax your knee onto the mat, untuck those toes if you prefer, and we'll find our twist to the opposite side. Again, hand up, or again, this time, I can take my left hand towards my right hip, and I roll that shoulder back. I use that leverage there to help find a big, beautiful stretch. No hurry, no rush. Unravel when you're ready. Set the hand on the floor and sink the hips back. Crawl your toes forward, flex the foot. Find that lovely little stretch. Enjoy that big, beautiful extension through the back of that leg. And then when you're ready, return to your downward dog. Bend those knees a little bit more. Reach your hips further away. Swivel them side to side. Take a full big inhale. Big deep sigh out. Now once more, I want us to propel forward and find our plank, but we are going to lower down onto our tummies. Now how slow can you go? Could you beat me? Could you go slower than I go? But we are gonna do it for a count of five. Let's go down for five, four, three, two, one. Did you lie on the ground? Could you keep yourself up a little bit longer? <gasps> Relax down. Good job. Untuck those toes. Reach the tops of your feet further away. And then kind of like we did with our fist earlier, I want you to try and kiss your elbows in towards one another while you broaden your chest side to side. Belly button in, pubic bone pressing down. Ever so lightly press into your palms to help roll your shoulder to help lift your heart and chest. Press down into the fingertips and almost imagine sliding them forward. It's like you're trying to um, pull your mat away from you. And that for me helps me lift up just a hint higher. Take a big inhale, exhale, lower down. Again, inhale, roll and lift. Exhale, soften down. Once more, roll and lift and hold and then press down into the tops of your feet. 
your pubic bone, pull that belly button up and in. Could you hover your fingertips up and away? Did you just fall down a little bit? That means we were using our arms just a little bit too much. And instead, you always ideally want to be using the back of your body here. Your hands are just a little support, just a little kickstand more than anything else. Could you keep your head and chest up and then reach the arms back behind you towards your hips? The minute you feel tension or any sort of pain in your low back, lie down and relax for a moment. That's okay. But just like we did earlier, belly button in, press down into the pubic bone, and we are going to try and touch our fist in. Inhale, release. Exhale, touch our fist in. Inhale, release. Three more, touch our fist in. Let it go. Last one, touch our fist in. Let it go. Slowly open those hands out to a T. Challenge of the day. Could you reach, 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 punch your arms forward like you're a little super person flying away? And then soften down. Beautiful job. Last little thing here on our tummy. Lift those feet, reach them nice and far away. And now your hands can really be wherever feels best for you. If you want to place one on top of the other, that's great. Um, you can have a, a tiny little spinal extension here, or your head can be flat on the mat. I'm going to keep mine up so you can hear me a little bit better. Um, but from here, big inhale. Exhale, float your right foot up. Did all of the weight just dump over into your right side? Did your left hip lift up? Can you readjust if that happened? Take another breath. Lift the left to meet the right. Press down into your pubic bone. Pull your belly button up and in. And now that same sort of thing we did earlier where those little magnets are attached to our inner thighs, we are going to kiss our inner thighs together. Release. Exhale. Kiss. Inhale. Release. Three more. Kiss. Inhale. Release. Two more. Last one, keep them together, stay. Point those toes, pull your belly button up and in. Really lengthen through the low back as much as you can. Imagine your spine is a slinky, and instead of just making big crinks in our spine, we are pulling it apart to find length, and then lifting up to find ever so slightly some spinal extension there. Take one more breath. Let it go. Bend your knees, windshield wiper, side to side. Go ahead, pull yourself up and back into a child's pose. And then very last thing of class today, bring your feet out in front of you. Hands behind your thighs. Roll your shoulders back and then take one hand forward, the other hand forward. If it fist help to keep those arms activated, that's wonderful. Or palms up to the sky. Big, deep inhale. Stamp down into your feet. Turn on your tummy. Tip your pelvis back and roll yourself all the way down. And again, could you beat me? Could you go slower than I am? Let's go back for five. Four, three, two, one. Did you lower down already? Ah, relax now. Good job. Walk those feet in. Soften your shoulders down and broad. Pull your belly button up and in. And maybe for just a moment, close your eyes. I want you to notice what's changed since we began class. Hopefully, we feel a little stronger. Maybe our mind was swirling when we started class and it's a little more calm. Maybe we feel a little more happy from just getting to move and groove on our mat. I certainly am now that I got to do a class just with you. Take a great big inhale. Big easy sigh out. One more big inhale. Let it go. Last time, release. Remember, you can always stay in your final resting pose as long as you want to. But when you feel ready, you can pull your knees into your chest, giving yourself a squeeze or take a big good morning stretch. Eventually rolling to one side and pushing yourself up to a seat. As always, give yourself a great big pat on the back saying thank you for doing something just for you. I certainly hope you enjoyed class today and I can't wait to see you again.